Well, we're starting something a little new here. It is new. Um, I'm going to begin doing more sharing um, about what the Lord is showing me. And he's been speaking to me in uh, a lot of dreams, a lot of visions, and um, a lot of time in prayer. Um, and it's it's like he's he's beginning to press on me to share it and invite you to um, be ministered to by what the Lord is showing me. There is so much going on in the world, and uh, God is speaking through all of it. And of course, He has a purpose. He has a will. His power is never too short. His arm is never too short. His power is never diminished. And uh, He wants to encourage His people. So I invite you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries. Also, you can subscribe to our newsletter on our website, faithfireworldwide.com. And uh, also, I'm going to do a better job of streamlining communication so that when uh, the Lord presses on me to share, you can get that access. So we're working on some things here in the ministry to do that better. Um, but I do want to invite you to let others know if this word, if, if what it is the Lord is saying through me is encouraging you or uh, challenging you in, in, in all the right ways, uh, comforting you, edifying you. Uh, bringing you uh, into alignment with his will and heart, I invite you to let others know this is a season in which there's a lot being said. There are a lot of opinions. There are a lot of messages. There are a lot of agendas, a lot of motives. And God is really beckoning his people to know his voice and, and follow his voice alone. And He's he spoke to me uh, over and over about making sure uh, I'm available to teaching and sharing with people what it is he's showing me. So this is what this is all about. And I pray that it uh, it touches you. So with all of that said, I want to share with you about a dream the Lord gave me the other night. And uh, initially, I, I didn't quite understand as it comes a lot with dreams. I didn't quite understand what the message was until I found the scripture. And I want to encourage you that if you're a dreamer, if you're a person that... Um, um, that leans into the prophetic in in the earth um, ask the Lord to show you what's happening in in scripture and so um, there's a person uh, prophet Joshua Giles says all the time if I'm not giving you the word of God I'm not giving you anything um, we got to show you what's happening in the Bible because it's stable it is um, devoid of anyone's opinion it is what it says, and it, it brings the stability of Jesus Christ. So in this dream, uh, I was with some friends, co-workers, uh, family. Uh, let's put it that way. You know, people that are not your relatives, but you see them as family. These were the, the folks I was with, and we were looking at the construction of a huge house. And it was a new house. And as we were going through, we were being toured by the project manager. And um, I believe this project manager was uh, a spiritual being of some sort. He never spoke, but uh, he was walking us through this massive house that was being built. And it didn't yet have uh, all of the flooring and all of that it was mainly um it was mainly the framing and the um the boards around the building but it didn't have siding or brick or anything like that but it was constructed it just needed to have a lot of the um furnishings or fixings uh still applied to it and as we're walking through this I was seeing places in the ceiling that were being balanced perfectly. So the shelter over this home that was being constructed perfectly, what well, was being constructed was being balanced perfectly. But listen to this. There were no nails. There was nothing that was fastening them. They were literally being balanced on one another by virtue of gravity and the perfect meeting of everything at its perfect angle so that nothing was falling apart. It was fascinating. And there were also places where um, there were laser cut spaces created for where the walls would be slid into place 
So inside this big, huge mansion, there were no rooms with walls. So you knew you were in a different room, but you didn't see walls. And I could see these, these slits almost that had been cut that would allow someone to drop walls down from the top perfectly and they would just slide into place. But there were no walls. They were scheduled to be dropped in later. And the Lord ministered to me about what that is and I'll share with you uh, about that in a minute. But there was just this feeling that at any time, the pieces of this house that were being balanced perfectly could just fall apart. It was very delicate, but it was very precisely put in place, especially the pieces of the ceiling and the roof. So as we were leaving, um, I, will, I walked up and out of the construction. And I, and I should say this, at some point during this tour, I felt as if at any time the roof could fall on me. And so I was walking through the house, almost ducking and trying to get through it pretty quickly, not running through it, but I wanted to expeditiously get through the house so I didn't stay there any longer than necessary because it just felt like at any time it could fall apart. And we'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, I'm leaving and a friend of mine's there and we're just talking. And I say to everyone, like, there's no rush. We can hang out. We can spend time together. There's no rush uh, for any of us to go anywhere. And so it was just a time for us to minister to one another and just be friends. And so with that said, I want to read to you a verse of scripture the Lord took me to after this and it ministered to me. And it talks about how the Lord is building. God is, is in a building project. And it's in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And I think this is appropriate in this time and season because there's so much division there. There is a lot of division. Amen. And the Lord hates division. And he says it's an abomination. Uh, he hates those that sow discord. And um, so it's something he hates. But let me read you um, this verse of scripture. I'm going to read um, from verse 19. In Ephesians 2, it says, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Let me just stop there. I'm going to read it again. This is the New King James, Ephesians 2, 19. This is the message. This is the heart of God. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. God is building his house and his house is being built with us. We are members of the household of God. So you know, you might be familiar with the idea that God says you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, you as an individual, but we as fellow citizens are a house. And so the Lord was showing me this delicate process. The house is not finished. There are more people he's bringing into the house. Amen. And so there's this delicate balance by the spirit that God uses to bring us together to build a house. And it looks like at any time it could fall apart. And I want to encourage you right now. It might seem like, you know, there's a lot of things that people just can't agree on in the body of Christ. But we're still being built. And it seems like at any time things could fall apart because there's a lot of passion, a lot of emotion around things. But God is a perfect master builder, bringing things together in perfect balance so the house doesn't fall down. And the walls are for later. Why? Because what does Jesus say? He says, in my father's house are many mansions. <laughs> I just get giddy about this. In my father's house are many mansions. So within the body that he's building, this household, this the citizenship of saints that he's building into his house. There are many mansions. So within there, there's space for everyone. But, but what was Jesus talking about at that time? He was talking about the place he was going to prepare for us, our place of rest. And so the house won't be finished until we're in glory. And so, and so until then, here is the encouragement that we are called to live as fellow citizens. We are not supposed to live as foreigners and strangers of one another. Yes, we might be people who have never met before, but because we're in the same house that's being built by the Lord, we can love one another even when we've never met. And it's encouraging us to, 
allow ourselves to start seeing each other in a house without walls. We're not going to be in a house with walls until we're in glory where the Lord gives us our reward, gives us our territory, our slice, our piece of the pie in glory. He's going to reward us for our doings. But until then, we are not to see separation between us. I pray this encourages you. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 14, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Paul there was talking about Jews versus Gentiles and how it used to be that people of the faith were all Jews. And there was a wall of separation because people who did not know Jehovah God were outsiders, right? Yes, there were people who were foreigners and strangers, a mixed multitude that lived in, Ju in, in Judaism and actually were engrafted in by serving the Lord. But there were certain restrictions even to them. But when Jesus gave his body and his blood, there became no wall of separation. And so between us and the original people of God, there's no separation. And so for all of us, all of us in the household of God, there should be no separation. I'm going to read that verse again because this is the healing of Jesus Christ. This is the power of the Spirit of God to heal us and bring us into, into our, our unity in Christ. Where it says in Ephesians 2.14, for he himself is our peace. Can we just stay there? Jesus alone is our peace. He is the only way. He is the common denominator. He is the only way we're going to come together. And so we're being built up into what? His body. His body is a house. And so we need to keep that in mind. And I was reading the other day in the book of 1 John, and I might do another message on this, but it encourages us to love one another because it's, it's there where we actually abide in God's love. Outside of loving one another, we're leaving a lot of the love of God on the table. We're not, in, we're not encouraging each other. We're not caring for one another. And so we're not able to truly um, experience the fullness of the love of God. I pray that this touches you. And um, I want to read this to you. Um, there is no separation between us as people of God. There is one house. There is not just one chosen people, just everyone who knows Jesus. And it says in Ephesians 2.20, having, having been built on the foundation of the prophets and apostles, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We're supposed to be all in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. We are the dwelling place of God in the spirit. It is an immaterial house and it's being delicately built by the master builder, God himself. And I'll finish with this. We are ever growing into a temple built to the Lord a dwelling place in the Holy Spirit. We are a house consumed and identified by the Holy Spirit himself. I pray this encourages you to pray for unity and to begin to operate even the more in a humble service to one another in the same house. One faith, one baptism, one spirit. Amen. God bless you. Look, if you want to connect with our ministry, faithfireworldwide.com is where you can go and learn more about me and the ministry. You can support us. Uh, we're working on some exciting things, some outreach, and I uh, would love for you to support the outreach events that we're working on and our worship gatherings here in the city of Greensboro. We love you. We give God all the glory. Until next time.